Hello out there, and today we are taking a look at a new budget offering from SRM Knives, and what we have here is a model that is numbered 9201. And if you're not familiar with SRM, they are the company that is formerly known as Sanren Mu. So they are based in China. They've been doing a lot of, of affordable knives for a long time. But in the past, what, like six months, it seems, they've sort of tried to evolve the company and take it to the next level and, um, and have updated their logo and their name and are sort of coming out with original designs. And it made them uh, a little bit appealing and made them interesting to me. And so when they reached out and they actually contacted me about doing a review for this knife, um, they let me choose between this and another model that they have. I said, yeah, I'll, I'll take one off your hands. <laughs> and they sent this knife my way. And so if you guys are aware of how that works on this channel, whenever I get something sent to me for free, it ends up getting into your hands. So there will be a giveaway for this knife. It will not be on this video, but stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll let you know when it will be and why I'm not doing it immediately. But for today's review, yeah, we're gonna go through this knife and talk about what you get here for 30 bucks. It's a $29.99 knife. It is available on Amazon, so you can link to that down below. So that is actually one of the benefits of uh, buying from them, where you know some of the, the Chinese producers, uh, when they ship direct from China, you put that order in and it takes you know three weeks to a month for you to get it. That's honestly how it used to be with some of the San Ren Moos that I'd get. But um, now Amazon Prime has them in stock and you can have them in just a couple days, which is uh, is pretty neat. We have a lot to talk about here, though, though, guys. So let's get into some of the size comparisons and some of the details about this knife that um, that make it pretty darn cool at the $30 price range if you're into this design. So starting with some comparisons, there were a few things that sort of jumped out at me as to being comparable. The Super Freak is a pretty good one, just in overall length and cutting edge. So you can see that the uh, the SRM here it has a nice size cutting edge of right around three and a half inches, and then overall we're looking at eight inches plus, like eight and a quarter. So it's a little shorter overall than the Super Freak, um, but it's also going to weigh a little bit less. So here's the PM2. Pretty good comparison there, again, when it comes to overall length, but that different blade to handle ratio, which we have talked about over and over again, because I use the PM2 comparison all the time. Let's bring out a mini grip, just because, why not? <laughs> Very different, right? So probably more comparable to the full size grip, but um, just to get a weight comparison between this and say the PM2 and the Super Freak, since those were the closest things in terms of size, here is the Super Freak 4.3 ounces, the PM2 3.87, and the SRM 3.39. So we have G10 scales on this. We do have liners that run almost like the whole length of the scales, which not all uh, knives with this type of lock have, uh, but they are inset and nested very well. And, um, and they're also milled, so we're not going to have a lot of weight because of that. All right, so let's just start with the blade here and talk about some of the details and um, some of the features that we have. So we have a black, like, stone wash blade, sort of that acid wash that we see on a lot of knives. This is a good-looking acid wash, though, and it is D2 steel. When it comes to performance, this knife, uh, it's done pretty well for me. I haven't done anything excessive with it, but I've cut plenty of things with it, and it's held up just fine. What I've sort of started to do, guys, because people talk, oh, well, it's D2, it's ATR, it's this or that, and people always get into, like, this big uproar about what the steel is, especially on budget knives, and then there's this debate as to whether the D2 is as good as that D2, and, and what I'm looking for at a budget price point is performance, like, what is the performance going to be compared to other knives in its class? I don't care what the stamp is on the blade, it can say... 8CR, 3CR, 1CR, no CRs. <laughs> you can say D2, D3, D4. I don't give a shit. Like, how does it compare to other knives in its class? And this knife is right up there. It's going to perform just as well as anything else you're going to get for 30 bucks. So zero worries there when it comes to the steel. I do like the blade shape. It is almost too 
there's almost too much belly and broadness almost like there's some of those so those features and characteristics that remind me of some of like the lion steels or some of like the the vox blades where there's too much belly right here and it just doesn't become that good of a knife to pierce with and as you can see the way that the the edge terminates and and how we get to this nice point um that's not the case here but it, it does remind me of that and so i had some thoughts when i first saw the knife that maybe you know i'd have an issue but but no not at all so i do overall like the design here nice little uh swedge so it is an attractive blade when it comes to blade stamping you saw the srm and it's an interesting thing the way that they have um the way that they've evolved the company name because San Ren Mu became SRM, which means stay ready for more. And so that's sort of just the mindset making like all purpose kind of EDC knives, not really trying to do anything too fancy, really focused on functional and uh, preparedness. And so what the expectation should be is a good durable tool at this price point with that logo and that motto as at least how I look at it. On the other side here with stamping, we have the 9201, which is the model number. Number. And then I don't know what's beneath it, the N47WGG00227. <laughs> I don't know what that is, but it's there. So don't think it needs to be on the blade, but there you have it. Um, at least it's small enough that it's not that big of a distraction. <laughs> um, but otherwise, other stuff with the blade, uh, we do have some jimping. The jimping is pretty good and it's in a good spot. I mean, it captures the thumb nicely, so there's a lot of good to say about that. The only thing, I do wish there were a couple more jimps moving forward, like right around here. A couple extra jimps. But as it is, guys, I I don't have any complaints with that. I mean, this is, this is good, and this is more than what you're going to get with most knives in this price range. And again, the quality of the jimping is pretty darn nice, too. So, see if we can get that focused. Maybe insert a picture. Struggling a little bit with it. There we go. That's a little better. Yeah, so pretty good stuff right there. The opening hole we'll talk about a little bit more um, as we get into the action in just a bit. Uh, the closed position of the knife is pretty nice. Looks good. Not too like tall up and down. Not too thick as far as uh, as far as like chunky in the pocket. And actually, since we have that just like this. Let's bring in that Super Freak just for a quick comparison. So you can see, if you're comfortable carrying the Super Freak, this is a little bit uh, slimmer than that. And let's see the PM2. Ah! It is comparable, I'd say, to the PM2. The scales on this guy are pretty thick, which is okay when you have the liners as nested as they are. And let's see if we can get a look inside at that a little bit. I'm not sure how well that's gonna work in this light. But, all right, yeah, you can see inside there. So the liners that are going pretty much all the way back, there's uh, machining on those, and yeah, looks good. Really nice and nested. If we continue to go on back, we do have one little flare of color with this blue uh, pivot collar. I like it. It doesn't really do much functionally, but it does give a nice little pop. The scales here are, are G10, and I've got to say, it is like some of the most inexpensive feeling G10 that you're going to come across. Um, there's, there's nothing terrible about them in terms of sharpness, but it is relatively low traction. And honestly, I, I sort of wish that this transition here just wasn't there. And they had either just gone with this pattern all the way through or this pattern all the way through, preferably this one. You know, and, and then it might have been, I don't know, just a little bit better. As it is, it just seems almost plasticky it's g10 though and so again it, it serves its purpose but this certainly isn't going to be winning any beauty contests now there are some different variations in terms of color um there is i think there's a black one with the satin blade and um and there might be one other color uh i really sort of wanted to go with the dark tan brown because it was something different and so that's what i did as we continue to go on back, you can see the uh, the backspacer doubles as a lanyard hole. And so I do like that because it doesn't interfere with anything in terms of the pocket clip. The pocket clip is reversible, tip up, loop over clip. It's not the deepest carry, but it is pretty darn deep and it's a good clip. So zero issues there. And again, this is not a beauty pageant knife. So you have this cutout, you don't have any filler. It just is what it is. 
So if you're looking for these like beautiful lines and uninterrupted glory, <laughs> I mean, again, you're, you're sort of looking at the wrong knife in general. All right, now let's get into some of the, um, the functional things that we want to talk about here. So the fit and finish on this knife, like I said with the scales, I mean, they're just not the, the, the best scales in terms of G10. So, I mean, this isn't a flawless knife in that capacity, but I mean, the knife is centered pretty well. And, um, and the action and the way that it's put together, it's a pretty darn strong knife. So let's talk about the locking mechanism. So this is what um, SRM is calling the ambi lock. And as we know, just looking at this, this is an axis lock. It gets the name ambi lock because it is a, um, well, it is an ambidextrous lock in that it's easy to actuate right-handed or left-handed. And in this knife, uh, it is a reversible clip. So right-handed or left-handed, it will be pretty much identical to open and close. Um, this is not a new innovation. This is something that Benchmade has done for a long time. And this is something that even though it was not called the Ambilock, that SRM slash Sanrenmu has been doing for a very long time. Sanrenmu was putting out knives with the axis lock on it. Um, before that patent ran out, which, you know, was a little bit of an issue for some people. <laughs> um, they were putting out knives with it, like, for 15 bucks for, for years, like, years and years ago. And they were putting out high-quality uh, access lock knives at that price. So, I mean, they've been able to do it and do it well for a very long time. So, while, you know, there's a lot of companies who are sort of doing this for the first time or releasing stuff for the first time, I have no, like, no qualms or reservations about the quality of what SRM is doing here just because it's nothing new for them. I mean, they've been uh, pretty experienced with this locking mechanism. The action is, and I'm going to have to, you know, insert something here, but the action is pretty darn good. There is just a tiny little bit of, uh, of, if you want it to really, really free drop, there'll be a tiny little bit of side to side. So you can see right here that it's not free dropping, but just a little bit of momentum and it goes all the way. And that's just because, um, that's just because I have it tightened pretty far. And now for 30 seconds of nonstop SRM action. All right. All right. One thing I do want to mention, and this is for anyone who likes to disassemble their knives, is, you know, a lot of times when I get knives, whether it's this company, another company, almost any company, I like to take it apart and clean the inside because a lot of times there's just grit or I just don't like the lubrication that they use. And I find that I can get a knife to, to open and close more smoothly if I just spend 10 minutes taking it apart and uh, cleaning everything and putting it back together. Don't know why that's always the case. It is. Uh, and <laughs> with this knife, I had some issues. I had some issues taking it apart and putting it back together. Not that it was difficult to take apart, like the, the hardware and everything was fine, so that was not an issue. The difficulty, and maybe you'll be able to notice, take a look at the pivot. <laughs> So I have a system of taking apart and putting back together uh, access lock knives, and it's very simple for me. Some people have criticized it, but basically it just involves taking apart the knife at the pivot, leaving the whole handle together, and then you literally just rebuild the knife uh, into the pivot. So the blade with the washers, boom, it goes right in, right? With Benchmade, it's pretty easy because you have one blade and two washers. You're good to go. It's not difficult. Um, it just takes a little bit of practice. This one is backwards. And so it has a, it has a backwards uh, pivot versus the Benchmade. And because of the way that it's built, you have to, um, you have to put it back together this way. And for me, it was just like doing it backwards. And it was extremely, extremely difficult for me <laughs> to do it the first time. And there's multiple sets of washers in this knife as well. So what I'm getting at, and it's not like a detriment to the knife. It's just uh, for your information out there, if you're thinking about taking this knife apart, um, depending on the process that you use to put it back together, it could really suck. It it was not fun for me to put back together. Uh, that said, it did improve the action and it was worth it in the end. So, um, so yeah, <laughs> so I did it. 
Um, the other thing though, is that some of the components on the inside did not look like brand new and shiny when I took it apart, which was a little bit of an eyebrow razor, a little bit of a red flag. But ultimately, you know, when I looked at the knife and when I took it apart, um, the pieces worked fine and the they're structurally sound. They just didn't look like they were brand new or I, I don't know. It just had a little bit of an odd uh, look to it internally. And, um, and while that might have been a concern, like a real concern in the past, and I mean, for some people, if a red flag goes up, I completely understand because, you know, it's not necessarily something you want to see. Um, but I can say, at least when it comes to SRM, is that whereas like five years ago with them, if you got a San Renmu and it broke, you'd be SOL and screwed. With this, I mean, they do have a warranty system and program now, as you can see from some of the stuff that comes with their knives. So they do have a, a year of free repair and then and then service and all this sort of stuff, limited lifetime warranty. So it seems like a pretty good warranty. Again, I have no um, experience with it. Don't know what that would actually look like, how that would work, the speed of it, any of that stuff. All I'm saying is that there is a system in place for if you do have an issue. That said, guys, I've never had a single Omega Spring break on me. I've had them wear down. I have had to replace them, but it's in super old knives that have been beaten to hell. And so, I don't know. I, I personally don't foresee there being an issue with me and this knife. All right. So, essentially... What we have is a knife that has some pretty good components at a good price. You know, depending on the things that you value, you know, the D2, something like the pops of color, the jimping, the usability, the strength and construction, um, there's a lot of boxes that are getting checked here, design-wise. And so for $30 in the Budget Blade series, I think that this is a very competitive knife with the rest of the knives that have I have put out there. Would I say that it's as good as this Ganzo? I don't know. I think that this knife feels just a little bit more, I don't know, just it, this knife feels more expensive, if that matters. But again, it depends on how you judge stuff. If you just want a knife that you're going to be able to beat on and beat up, uh, this for $30 seems to be a pretty darn good one. And it's going to be good for a number of other things as well. So now that we've been through the knife, why are we not doing the giveaway today? What is... Uh, <laughs> What's the holdup? When is the giveaway going to be? Well, the reason we're not doing it today is because of this knife. Because I want to do a comparison. So when SRM contacted me, they gave me the option of these two models. So the one that I just reviewed here, which is the 9201. And they also gave me the option at the 9211. Well, the 9211, if we're being honest, is the one that appealed to me more. This one is an 8CR. It's $19.99 instead of $29.99. And that's not really what appealed to me. It's just the, the lines of the knife are, are different from just about anything that I have in my collection at this point. Sort of reminded me of the Spyderco Akuchi, but with a different blade shape, which is sort of Tantoish, sort of uh, Persian. I don't even know. You know, but I was like, I want to get this one. And so I bought this one for myself. And it's going to make for a very interesting comparison because there are some details with this SRM up here uh, for the extra $10 that this one is lacking, maybe in terms of steel quality, in terms of uh, liners, in terms of construction, lots of things. And that doesn't mean that this isn't a good knife. But again, I, I want to make that comparison video at some point, which is why we're going to hold off on the giveaway for now. The one we are going to be doing the giveaway is for the uh, holiday giveaway on this channel. The yearly holiday giveaway where I give away three, four, maybe five knives this year. So this will be one of those knives. And so that's uh, how you will be able to get this one in your hands. If you don't want to wait that long, I completely understand. Check them out. Like I said, I will link down below. Uh, but again, there is another SRM review coming on the way in the next week or so, maybe a little bit longer, depending on the other things I have to get into. But as it is, guys, I got to thank SRM for uh, sending me this one. And um and yeah, sort of turning me on to these knives because I made this purchase myself. This is the one that I wanted to keep just because it was different. But this one is certainly a, a, a good entry and a nice affordable one as well. So any questions, comments, complaints, suggestions, let me know down below. I really appreciate you guys watching. Thanks again. Take care and have a good one.